Okay, folks. Uh, Dane here at Johnny Guitars. And um, got a nice little old little guitar in here. And uh, probably should have taken more time and showed, showed you the case. So obviously, the handle died at some point. So, this is a 50s triple O 21. Um, and uh, I'll get it out of the case here. It's just got a couple cracks that the owner wants addressed. And I uh, just wanted to kind of show you what it looked like in this case. This case is a little big for this guitar. It's kind of just been banging around in here for a whole lot of years. I'm also going to look the number up and find out exactly what year it is if I can find that information. Um, you can tell without looking very hard. Uh, somebody over reamed the the pins. My heater's starting to make a weird noise. Uh, this pin's really low. These are all really low. This one's up about still low but a little, a little higher than the rest. Anyway, I told him I'd check it all out and make sure, find out if he had any loose braces or anything. It doesn't sound like it from tapping around on it. And uh, yeah, it's either got binding that's coming loose or uh, the back is separating and the bindings with the back. But it's, he had, somebody scotch taped it together at some point. I haven't taken that off yet to find out what the actual problem might be. And you can see here the uh, all the way through, quite quite a bit all the way through, and here as well. So, they never played this thing. Must have played a lot with their fingers um, up here rather than here. Although there is quite a bit of wear here. I'll, I'll, however, um, you know, in 70 years um, or somewhere in that period, uh, a lot of different people could have played it and and worn it in different places. So I'll get it out of the case, uh, try to get a better camera angle on this thing, and we'll take a look at it. I'm just going to take the number down right now and look it up later. But So, yeah, it's a triple O twenty one three four one. Interesting thing here. Um, they wrote right on the center strap here on the back. I'm looking at it upside down. So it says... Theodore, and I can't read that. Seven twelve sixty. So seven twelve sixty. And I'll just turn this thing over here so I can. It looks like it says man, Theodore man, seven twelve sixty. Um. On the next piece of backstrap, it says Martin. I don't know. Uh, I've had quite a few triple O eighteens in the shop. This is my first twenty one. I got. I wasn't even aware there was a twenty one. Um, my buddy, who's uh, had several uh, Martin guitars in here, um, ran into him the other day. He told me this was a. It's a little different scale or something. But I think the 18s are a shorter scale as well. So the typical Martin is 25 and a quarter, and you know a, a regular dreadnought. This is this is actually 25 inches. I said 25 and a quarter. I meant to say 25.4 on the standard Martin uh, fenders. As you know, uh, electric guitars are 25.5. So the Martin scale to a Fender scale is only just a really slight difference. Um, as far as fret spacing is concerned. But yeah, this is right at 25, so this is more like a PRS, because that's what a, a PRS is, 25 inch scale. I'm not sure what the triple O 18s are, I don't have one here handy, I'd have to look it up. Um, so I'll look this up later on and figure out if, uh, you know, how, how what time in the 60s, or if the guy just wrote his name in it today, he bought it in the in 60s sometime here, it says. 12 so June or excuse me July 12th 1960 um, all right <clears throat> I'm gonna try not to uh, 
drag this out. Um, but we're just going to do some checking around here. Um, it does look like this. You know, it, there again, it must just be a shadow. Well, let me see. Well, maybe. It was looking to me like that bridge was lifted a little bit, but the paper says otherwise. I can get the paper to lay flat on the guitar, it might help. No? Put my visor back on. No. no that looks pretty solid. I'm going to, um, I'm going to tune this thing and I'm going to just check. There was one crack I spotted just, just in the side. Well, it's right here. Um, right there where my finger is, there's a crack about that long. And, uh, and there's another crack right here about that long. It's got some lacquer checking. Um, I don't see anything there. It's got something going on right here in the side. Might help or hinder, I'm not sure. There's something going on right here. I think this might be a finish crack, although it does appear to be following the grain line, so it could be uh, going through. And then the, where this tape is here, this is separated. Now I don't know if it's binding or, uh, or if it's the back and the binding coming off. So you've got it right here and then apparently it's... Oh, wait a second. Here, we definitely got some movement there. I think it might just be binding. Yeah, that binding's popping in and out right there. I'll get inside with a mirror and put a light in it and see if I can see light through the outside. And that'll tell me whether it's separated. Got a got a crack right here in the top. Um, you know, I have to look at that better too. That's either a, it's either a crack or just a really good gash in the in the finish right there. So uh, I want to tune it up and play it a little bit. Um, when I first looked at it, it looked like the string action was fairly low, although it looks higher now. Um, it's kind of a quick and dirty way to, you know, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. Kind of a quick and dirty way to check your, your, your neck uh, relief is to uh, usually just, you know, hold it down at the first fret, which is happening over here with my finger and hold it down at the body joint and then I just reach over with my hand to the seventh fret and just check it. This this neck is flat which is very weird for for an old uh, acoustic guitar and I might even say especially a Martin because of the non-adjustable truss rod they typically they typically pull up. Though I don't know these strings it felt pretty light as well so I'll have to mic them real quick and see but yeah that's that's really unusual to have a neck that flat very flat um, I don't well, let me check again here. I mean I'm getting very little movement there so it's basically laying on the fret it is laying on the first on the middle here Wow. All right, and just for kicks and giggles while the camera's running. Um, we're right at 6 64ths, which is uh, 
mentioned this before is fairly acceptable in some people's uh, opinion that's a hundred thousands um, a little high in my opinion although um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend a neck reset at this point we've got um, you know pretty much we've got some good saddle on the left on the on the fatty here and still got a little on the right side the right side the trouble side uh, however the uh, E string high E string is at 460 force which is really just dandy so could even just shave a little saddle on this thing um, the obvious problem there is that the saddle is exposed on each end so if you shave it it's going to go down it's going to make it short in the slot um, I could cut a new saddle of course and do all that well without with, it, with the neck being this straight, you probably really wouldn't want to have the action a whole lot lower than that. So, I mean, maybe 164th, but that's, that's kind of just getting nitpicky. I'm going to tune it up. The neck uh, is kind of a soft V. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little more obvious when you get up here, and that could be just that it's kind of worn down a bit here. Although it, it, the wood isn't bare, so, uh, but it's just a little more noticeable. Maybe it's because the neck's wider and, and thicker here, so they have more room to bring it to a peak. But um, I, I like the V neck. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> fretware up here on the first few strings, the high strings, and you know, up at the cowboy chord end of things here. The only string that sounds like there's a problem is this Anyway, I'm just supposed to be looking at it to fix the cracks. I just like to check them out, but I think it sounds good. Um, benefit from a little relief in the neck being that it's just totally flat uh, it's, we're getting some rattles um, and this is a non-adjustable truss rod. Oh, I gotta find out what the strings are on this thing because you might just put a heavier set of strings on it and get a little bit of bow in the neck might help it so I went and got my calipers This thing has nines on it. Nine forty ones. So a uh, set of elevens on this thing might actually um, help it play a little better. It's it's super easy to play though, and that's probably why. Because that was I think that's why I was thinking it had such a low action. Because there's no no tension on these strings. They're just. Yeah, even a 
a set of tens might put enough extra tension on this neck to pull it up a little bit. They might have done that in, a, in an effort to reduce the, the string height, but um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see actually what what a you know one one gauge heavier would do. I'll talk to this guy and see if he wants to try that out just for kicks and giggles. Anyway. I, uh, I'm going to peel this tape off of here and see what we got going on. I'll bring you back in. I got, I got a guitar apprentice guy coming over here in a couple minutes, so I'm going to cut you loose.